Here's a useful uh, application of symmetry in quantum mechanics, symmetry in integrals. Spatial integrals of wave functions have, will be zero. They have to be zero unless the integrand has a totally symmetric, irreducible representation of A1. If the integrand does not contain A1, uh, A1 symmetry, or it's A1 irreducible representation, then the integral can be zero, but doesn't have to be. So this is a restrictive thing here. Um, so let's take a look here. Just go ahead and do this. For C2V symmetry, suppose that we have a wave function which has irreducible representation A1, and we're going to uh, multiply that with another wave function that has an irreducible representation of A2. And we want to show that that uh, is equal to zero. Uh, that's what the overlap integral is. Let's go here. So what's the overlap integral? That's equal to the integral over all space of some wave function psi i star times some other function psi j times t tau. And suppose that psi i has an irreducible representation equal to, say, a1, and psi j has an irreducible representation equal to a2. Well, what you can do, the way to do this, is to just look at the symmetry of one and times the symmetry of the other. So it would be a1 multiplied by a2, and this is for C2V symmetry. And we know that the irredu irreducible representations, those rows in the character table, are orthonormal. So that if you multiply one irreducible representation by another irreducible representation, say A1 and A2, this is guaranteed to be zero because of the orthonormality of A1 and A2. All right, so just to show that, let's go ahead and look up an A1 uh, representation in our list of character tables here. Uh, here it is, C2V. All right, so A1 is 1, 1, 1, 1. So recall that if we're going to multiply uh, two irreducible representations, we take the total number of symmetry operations. In this case, is 1, 2, 3, 4. Note that if, you're, if you have classes, you have to include all the members of the class. For instance, here, there are two C3s, three C, so this would be six total symmetry operations. But for C2V, we only have uh, single members of each class, so that's a total of four. So it would be one-fourth times this uh, multiplication here. So A1, that's a totally symmetric, is all ones. And A2 is ones and minus ones. One, one, minus one, minus one. And what we do is multiply these together and add them. One plus one minus one minus one. All right, so we do all that. Divide by four. We don't have to because that's equal to zero. So just by looking at the symmetry of the orbital, we can tell whether it has to be zero. We don't have to actually go through and do all this calculation. Symmetry just says it's zero. Well, if, um, in fact, the, you do have an A1 representation, so remember what we said was, if you do have an A1 representation there, then the integral um, may be zero, but doesn't have to be zero uh, because of symmetry.
The application of symmetry to integrals goes beyond just using wave functions. We can use a general wave function or a general function. For example, suppose we're looking at the integral over all space of um, some general function f uh, times g, the product of those two functions. We could use symmetry. If these uh, particular functions have symmetry, then we could use symmetry to determine whether uh, this integral has to be zero or not. Uh, let's take uh, a symmetry. Uh, we're going to use, say, 2v symmetry. And suppose that the function f has a, irreduci or a reducible representation uh, equal to 2, 2, 0, 0. And when I mean this, I'm using the, or when I write this, I'm using the uh, symmetry operations of the C2V. That's the E, that's the C2, that's the sigma V, and sigma V prime. All right, so that's what those mean there. And suppose for a function G, that also has some symmetry. And that's given by uh, 4 minus 2, 2, and 0. All right, so these are representations of the f and g functions, but they're not irreducible representations. If we check the uh, character table for C2V, we don't find any of those representations in here. So they're not irreducible representations. Okay, so even these have reducible representations, and if in these reducible representations there's an A1 symmetry, then the integral can be zero, but doesn't have to be. However, if in those reducible representations there's no A1 symmetry, then the integral has to be zero. All right, so let's try to see if there's any A1 symmetry in these um, particular reducible representations. So to do that, Take the irreducible representation for the A1 symmetry and we uh, project out in this reducible one. Let's try the F function first. We project out and see if there's any A1 in here. So to do that, we take 1 over the total number of symmetry operations times a function or times a number, which we get by doing this. Uh, we put the A1 here, remember? This is A1. And then we put the reducible representation 2, 2, 2, 2. Uh, 2, 2, <laughs> can't copy those numbers there. Um, 2, 2, 0, 0. We multiply and add them. This is 2 plus 2 plus 0 plus 0. And that's equal to 4. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. So yes, this implies that there is an A1 irreducible representation corresponding to this function f. Let's do the same thing for function g. Let's project out how many a1s there are in the reducible representation of g. That's one-fourth. And let's see. So we have this one, 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 one. That's a1. The reducible representation is four minus two, two, zero. So let's add these up. This is 4 minus 2 plus 2 plus 0. Okay, divide that by 4, that's 4. Divide that by 4, that's 1. So this implies there is A1 symmetry uh, within the G function. So when you multiply this out, there'll be some that may or may not be um, A1 symmetry, but there will be because both F and G contain the A1 symmetry this this does not have to be zero. All right. If we had tried to project out from F and G A1 and we found out that F and G do not contain any A1, then this integral would have to be zero. Now we've already had an example of symmetry uh, already and uh, when it how it related to integrals. Remember that we had the Hermit polynomials and we said that if uh, n is even, remember the Hermit polynomials we are characterized by this quantum number n. If n is even this implies that the integral is not equal to zero. However if n is odd 
this implies that the integral that Hermite polynomial for all space is equal to zero. All right. Or in general, what is an even and odd function? Well, let's look at this. Y is equal to uh, X. All right, here's the graph of the function y equal x. This is y, this is x. Any point here is represented by a point here. Point here represented by a point here. Oh, what is that point right here? That's a center of inversion. Okay, so y equal x has a center of inversion, which means that if we integrate something that's odd, or in other words, it has a center inversion, i, that is equal to zero. So the fact that we used the center of inversion, this odd functions have a center of inversion, means that um, we can set that integral equal to zero. Let's look at, uh, say, an even function. Say y is equal to x squared. This is what y is equal to x squared looks like. This is x, this is y. Look here, there is a coming out towards you, there's a plane of symmetry. All right, that was given a simple sigma. So this plane of symmetry, if we reflect this part of the function back into here and that into there, we find that we get the same function back. So there's an example of symmetry applied to uh, these functions x and y. All right, so symmetry is useful. Uh, the usefulness is that sometimes you can say an integral is equal to zero. So we had some examples here. Here, uh, these two wave functions, uh, since they um, are different symmetries, then uh, the multiplication there is zero. And we saw that in general, some function, if it has a reducible representation, you can project out any a1, and if both functions have an a1, then this integral doesn't have to be zero, but if one or the other function doesn't have an a1 symmetry, well then the function then is equal to zero.